All right, after being bitten by a radioactive bird, somewhat mannered, Teach that Hill feels compelled to become Kinius, the Sky Dude. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kinius here. Memorial Day. So, don't let anybody tell you that Colorado Springs isn't a military town. It certainly is. So, just to the uh, northwest of where we're at, we have the Air Force Academy. To the kind of southwest from here, Fort Carson, the uh, KFCS Butts Air Force Base, Peterson Air Force Base, Kit Carson. So growing up here, uh, I had a great respect for the military. And uh, today we are remembering their service to the nation, their, sac their service and sacrifices to this nation. And man, These days, it, I don't know, it just, maybe I'm just crazy, but a lot of people seem to feel the same way, that this, this just isn't the uh, America that we grew up in, that things are changing so fast that uh, certain elements of society uh, don't necessarily feel all that American. And a lot of the things that they seem to be pushing on us today don't necessarily feel all that American. So I'm going to try not to be uh, too political. We have a bunch of military craft just right here. Stationed to Colorado Springs Municipal Airport. That's where we're currently at. I don't have any jobs lined up. Uh, I didn't continue on this weekend. Just too much going on, and uh, it's too busy. I told you about all the barbecues and things that were planned. So uh, we didn't break the $200,000 threshold, and we're starting to accumulate some more wear and tear on the aircraft make sure you can see that things see if scenes are switching properly yeah so up here in the upper corner we're at 196425 uh, but we're starting to get some um some damage to the plan i can't repair this while it is while it is running we have 98.3 percent on our hole and 96.6 .6. now unfortunately these are really really costly i don't know where you know how they get their figures to do all this stuff but you will grind and grind and grind and grind and then you're going to end up dumping uh, a significant amount of your earnings into a plane that isn't even worth that much uh <clears throat> so I suppose we should really get to it today. Let me see about uh, pulling off here. Get back to our plane. And see about getting ourselves some jobs for the day. And uh, as we go, see if I can't... Uh, if I can't show you some of the sites. I wonder if I can just pull into this parking lot and get a job instead of going all the way back to the main terminal. Go hang out over here with the with the big boys. Uh, a lot of these uh, flights that we've been doing here have been from KCFS Air Force Base over there near the mountain. Been using that. Uh, been providing some pretty good paying jobs. so tiny 
All right. Pull over here and turn off our engine for a moment. See if we can't get ourselves a job going on today. Okay. There's one of Bishop Bishop Castle. We haven't been out there yet, and it's in a little bit of a valley. And uh, I really, you know, it, I mean, we could try it one of these days, but or try it, but it you really have to kind of drop down in, and it's uh, I think it's kind of dangerous. To try to get people down in there to uh, get their photographs and all. Royal Gorge. All right. There's one over to the Air Force Academy. We should probably just take it anyway to run over there. There's one down to Pueblo. Oh, I can't pass it up. $5,000 job just down the road to Pueblo or up the road, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, I can't pass up a 5,000. So we'll, we'll do that and we'll fly over to uh, Fort Carson in the uh, Air Force Base over here. We'll take a quick look at NORAD. Then we'll head south. So let's see if uh, Alana will let us take this job from here. Transport Excellent. Good morning. The sensitive cargo mission will start as soon as you get in your aircraft in the harbor. We're here and ready to go, Alana. So sensitive. I always joke that they're like so sensitive, but then it sounds like they're just, just clacking things about. Flight crew, be advised the fragile cargo looks extremely delicate. We have secured it the best we can. Please pack it with caution. You got it. We will try. We are cleared, already cleared for takeoff. 25 right. Dun -dun. Might be in the middle of the day. Sometimes in this plane, things are a little bit dark. Turn up the... Uh, your lights a little bit all right if you were or are in the military i don't believe it is proper for citizens to salute members of the military uh, all we can really do is just say thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you feel like I do, that country's just kind of in a bad, bad place, I understand and I am, I am with you. Uh, hopefully we're, we're on the same page, you know? I don't want to find myself at odds with, are, you know, the most important people in our country. We already have clearance, so let me just pop back up here. But thank you. Thank you for everything. You have uh, relatives or immediate family that are or were. Thank you to them. Uh, my father was. My father was Army. So one of my biggest regrets is uh, you know, I wanted to be an artist growing up. I mean, I really admired the military, but, I, you know, different calling. 
And so I didn't. I didn't. Uh, man, this runway needs help. Our poor AI crashed just taxiing the other day. One of the taxi taxiways has got a wicked uneven spot. But I've had quite a few family members that were Have a nice flight. that were military, so I ended up not. And that is one of those regrets, you know, like wouldn't have been forever, and I should have. Got a few military craft parked over here. Uh, in the old uh, version FSX, definitely see some good ones parked around here, and occasionally like the SR seventy one. I know they have the uh, Osprey now available for the flight simulator. It'd be neat to see, you know, some of the craft, even though if you don't have them or not. Even if you do not have them, for them to add them to the world. To dress up some of the bases, I would definitely love to see some of the military craft. They need to uh, seriously have somebody do some work on Colorado Springs. We have a significant amount of uh, elevation errors going on. I don't recall them early on during the alpha. It's like something went wrong since release. So I'm heading towards Cheyenne Mountain and just and that's the uh, home of NORAD. Uh, and after all this time, too, they still haven't put all the, the towers in. There might be an upgrade you can get that puts in towers. And um, and I thought I had something like that. But all the towers uh, aren't. And they've always been part of earlier simulators. I always figured they would. And I had been writing them since Alpha. Tell them, please put in the uh, towers on Cheyenne Mountain. Nope, nothing yet, but NORAD is directly, uh, kind of directly ahead of us. And also Fort Carson, the air, uh, the army base. And then right beyond that is, uh, Lutz air force base. Now I know that's kind of, I, you know, and I, and I laugh about that a lot and who doesn't, you know, the place is called butts. B U T T S, but you know I've never really looked into like well, who was who was butts? I mean, that's us. It says it's still part of Fort Carson, butts Army Airfield. So I keep calling it an Air Force base, but that so my bad. A Butts Army Airfield uh, at the fort was constructed between 1963 and 1966 with a 4,573-foot runway uh, for light-fixed wing aircraft. But it does say United States Air Force C-130 nearby Peterson Air Force Base, something like that. So 
So Fort Carson is the United States Army uh, post located directly south of Colorado Springs. In it. One moment. Make sure your my audio levels are right. Two one three four squawk, squawk, squawk. All right, let me use my super, super powers, my sky dude super powers. You pause time here, three zero zero six, right? Oh, it looks like we can't do that while we're paused. All right, but I do want to pause so I can come out here and uh, and put the camera while I read something here. And I can't get it all in, but mm -hmm. you get the idea. Fort Carson's the United States Army post located directly south of Colorado Springs and El Paso, Pueblo, Fremont, and Huerfano counties. In the United States, the uh, the developed portion of Fort Carson is located near the city of Colorado Springs in El Paso County. Fort Carson is the home of the 4th Infantry Division, the 10th Special Forces Group, the 4th Security Force Assistance Brigade, the 440th Civil Affairs Battalion, the 71st Ordnance Group, the 4th Engineer Battalion, the 759th Military Police Battalion, the 10th Combat Support Hospital, the 43rd Sustainment Brigade, the Army Field Support Battalion, Fort Carson, the 423rd Transportation Company, and the 13th Air Support Operations, scroll down here, Operations Squadron of the United States Air Force. The post also hosts units of the Army Reserve, Navy Reserve, and the Colorado Army National Guard. Fort Carson was also home to the 5th Infantry Division, known as the Red Devils. Nice. Camp Carson was established in 1942 following Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. The city of Colorado Springs, Colorado, purchased land south of the city and donated it to the War Department. Construction began immediately, and the first building, the camp headquarters, was completed on January 31st, 1942. Camp Carson was named in honor of the legendary Army, Army Scout, General Christopher Kit Carson, who explored much of the West in the 1800s. At, at the construction's peak, nearly, nearly 11,500 workers were employed on various construction projects at the new camp. Facilities were provided for 35,173 enlisted men, 1,818 officers, and 592 nurses. Almost all of the buildings were mobilization type construction with wood sided exteriors. The hospital complex was constructed of concrete block, considered semi permanent, and had space for 1,726 beds, expandable to 2,000 beds. The 89th Infantry Division was the first major unit to be activated at Camp Carson during uh, World War II. Over 100,000 soldiers trained at Camp Carson, along with three other infantry divisions. 71st Inf Infantry Division, 104th Infantry Division, and 10th Mountain Division. More than 125 units were activated at Camp Carson, and one and uh, more than 100 others were transferred to the Mountain Post from other installations. Nurses, cooks, mule packers, tank battalions, a Greek infantry battalion, and an Italian ordnance company trained at Camp Carson during the war years. Camp Carson was also home to nearly 9,000 Axis prisoners of war, mostly Italians and Germans. The internment camp at Camp Carson opened on the first day of 1943. These POWs uh, alleviated the manpower shortage in Colorado by doing general farm work. Yeah, I had no idea. They were canning tomatoes, cutting corn, aiding in logging operations on Colorado's western slope. What a nice place to be to do it, though, right? Beautiful here. Between 1942 and 1956, Pack mules were a common sight at Camp Carson. 
first shipment arrived by train from Nebraska in 1942. The mules were used by field artillery pack battalions to carry equipment, weapons, and supplies over mountains. Uh, the most famous of these animals was Hambone, the pride of the 4th Field Artillery Battalion. For 13 years, Hambone carried the 1st Sergeants up Ute Pass to Camp Hale. Camp Hale, located near Leadville, Leadville Colorado, was where the Army conducted cold weather and mountain warfare training. Hambone died in 1971 and was buried with full military honors. By April 1946, the post-war military strength of the camp was around 600. So, and there's a lot more. There's a little bit here under controversy. I don't, controversy. On February 14th, that's Valentine's Day, 2007, the U.S. Army announced it was moving forward with a plan to expand the Pinon Canyon maneuver site in southeastern Colorado. If expanded, Pinon Canyon would be the Army's largest single training area in the nation, tripling the size of the current site by adding 418 acres. Many in the local civilian population are opposed to this plan because much land in rural areas that would be added to the training site is civilian-owned ranch land, and many current landowners are unwilling to be supplanted. Regardless of the compensation that may be offered, Pinon Canyon Expansion Opposition Coalition, an activist group opposing the plan, says the former maps it obtained from the Army showed a future expansion area significantly greater than is now being contemplated. The Army's position is that the expansion is essential for preparing soldiers for battle in an uh, ever-growing theater such as Afghanistan and the Middle East. On November 25, 2013, the U.S. Army announced that its plan to expand the Pinon Canyon maneuver site had been canceled. In response to a congressional ban on Army funding for an expansion plan, the United States Air Force moved in with a plan to use the area for V-22 Osprey flights. I was talking about those. I was uh, looking to see if I um, could find anything on the uh, airfield. And let's head over there. Roger, QDS, two, one. Something's wrong with active pause in the simulator now. It uh, seems to, sometimes it uh, doesn't unfreeze properly. But yeah, it's grown up quite a bit. Very, very busy still every day, but, you know, the traffic going in and out of the, the base, usually taking one of the same exits that a lot of the uh, same, you know, the folks that are working here do. Always very busy. Butts Army Airfield is an active runway and hangar facility used primarily by Army Rotary Wing Aircraft. In early 1949, landing an aircraft at Camp Carson was extremely hazardous. A bumpy dirt strip on the edge of the post was the only facility available. Dust often decreased the visibility to zero.
pause here. Uh, appropriations in the fall of that year allowed for this. They're talking 1949 still. Appropriations in the fall of that year allowed for the bulldozing of a new dirt strip and construction of a small wooden operation shack. However, the aircraft maintenance had to be done in the open, and the wind still made landing and taking off hazardous. As a result of the uncertain conditions of the Carson Strip, the first Army aircraft operated by post personnel were based on a single hang hangar at Peterson Field. In 1954, air operations were moved to an area now in NCO housing. Winds of 60 knots or better were common, making the approach over the hospital complex extremely tricky. There were no hangars either when high winds came up. Trucks had to be parked beside the aircraft to protect them. Two years later, air operations were again relocated, this time to a Mesa Strip adjacent to today's Butts Army Airfield. There was one building on Mesa Airstrip, but it was dilapidated. Eventually, a T-shaped prefab hangar was constructed, but by the time it was completed, it, had all, it was already obsolete. Appropriations for modern improvements were made in the fall of 1963. Uh-oh, I'm getting music. Maybe. Can't have that. Get some sort of uh, copyright against us for who knows. Da, da, da. Uh, Mountain Thunder is a joint training exercise for airmen, soldiers, and Marines from Colorado and Texas. I was hoping to find, you know, why do they, wh whose butts? You know, why do they call it that? I mean, mm, 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 mm. We can find that. Okay. Named after John E. Butts. Okay, it's still primary mission for uh, is to provide Army heliport, provide fully integrated fixed base helicopter operations support for all Army aviation assets assigned to or training on Fort Carson. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, uh. History named after John E. Butts, rank and organization second lieutenant, U.S. Army, <clears throat> 60th Infantry, 9th Infantry, Medal of Honor awarded posthumously, place and date Normandy, France, July, uh, sorry, June 14, 16, and 23, 1944, entered service at Buffalo, New York, born Medina, New York. <clears throat> Second Lieutenant Butts heroically led his platoon against the enemy in Normandy, France on June 14th through the 16th, 14, 16, 23rd, 1944. Although painfully wounded on June 14th near Orglandis and again on June 16th while spearheading an attack to establish a bridgehead across the Douve River, he refused medical aid and remained with his platoon. A week later near Floatmanville, ha Hague, Flotmanville Hague. He led an assault on a tactically important and stubbornly defended hill, studded with tanks, anti tank guns, pillboxes, machine gun emplacements protected by concentrated artillery and mortar fire. As the attack was launched, Second Lieutenant Butts, at the head of his platoon, was critically wounded by German machine gun fire. Although weakened by his injuries, he rallied his men and directed one squad to make a flanking movement, while he alone made a frontal assault to draw the hostile fire upon himself. Once more he was struck, but by grim determination and sheer courage, he continued to crawl ahead within 10 yards of his objective. He was killed by direct fire. By his superb courage, unflinching valor, and inspiring action, Second Lieutenant Butts enabled his platoon to take a formidable strong point and contributed greatly to the success of his battalion's mission. After the war, Butts' remains were brought back from Normandy to the United States, and in 1948, Interred at St. Mary's Cemetery in New York in 1957, the Army Airfield at Fort Carson, Colorado, was named the Butts Army Airfield.
So now we know. Now I know. Now we know. Because I've been asking that for a long time. I'm like, who is he? And that was the perfect day to find out. Put up my flags outside today. Got the yard all cleaned up. A lot of the questions, I wonder what people from his time, it wasn't ultimately that long ago. We just, it feels that way. People are like, oh, that's ancient history. It's not. It's, it really was just yesterday. You don't, when you're younger, it feels like time lasts forever. But as you start getting older, that phenomenon that, man, now time passes so fast when you get older it just time flies and you start realizing that yeah well there went 40 years there went another 40 years it wasn't that long ago at all in the big picture of things but it's since then it's like you know uh, going back to what was what i was getting at is how would they feel about the country today? How would they feel about where we're at today? If you have any thoughts on the above, don't hesitate. You can feel free to hop into the chat and express your feelings. I don't mind your day I travel this road frequently frequently uh, I-25 southbound to Pueblo that's where we're headed right now to the Pueblo Municipal Airport. And living here, I completely, you know, could feel the, uh, as I was reading that bit on dealing with the winds and trying to protect the aircraft and dealing with high winds, the dust, and it just, just in some days it, it, I'm sure it's still hell but but back then man it must have been rough so down below here all those cars parked they managed to capture the Bing maps the, these Bing maps are quite old actually and that is when the VW uh, the, the Volkswagen cars were all recalled they filled up this entire area, this parking lot area, and there was all the way full, not, this is only when they were mostly full, uh, with cars that were going to be shipped back. And then they, at some point in time, they built this international speedway down there, and then immediately closed it. They built this amazing, amazing speedway down below. And, um, and then, yeah, and then pretty much closed it. And blows my mind. They do that a lot around here. And not something we're happy about is developers come in and they, they build all these things when there's so much that's not being used. So many old older buildings that could be used. And now let's build something new. And let's, let's develop and develop and keep developing like stupid, like stupid people. And then those will be empty in a couple of years. And I don't know if they do it for the insurance or what. I don't know. But it's it's really ridiculous. There's a, you know, and then they just let it all fall apart. And the Colorado Springs in general, like every other place these days, you know, uh, it's definitely not a, a golden age. Not at all. 
certain element in our American society just, you know, they make things quite miserable for a large portion of our uh, society. We have just such a, a horrible, I want to say criminal elements and then just gang elements and just, just crappy citizens all around. And, you know, it's always those few bad apples that just make things horrible for everybody else. They haven't been, uh, they've maybe been moving a lot of their artillery and bombing lately, deeper down range. I'm not really sure. Normally, sometimes when they're doing their, their bombing, they've been so close to Colorado Springs. I don't live too far. from uh, where we took off from uh, and Fort Carson and sometimes you f it almost feels like your house is, is rattling I've uh, gone on to Twitter a couple of times and like look I love you folks but uh, y you know the, the base commander over there you gotta let him know that I'm, I'm here in security and you're rattling our house in security so uh, I really feel for everybody between here and there that must be getting it even worse but I'm like come on you you know you need to you need to move down range a little bit so yikes It was like, go oh, that way. Or what are you, you know? What in the world are you detonating out there?
Yeah, all right. There is an armory out here. Uh, see if I can find anything on that. It's operated and managed, owned and managed by the Colorado Army National Guard. Colorado National Guard, Armory History, Colorado. Colorado's Golden, uh, Golden's Colorado National Guard Armory building was constructed in 1912. Reported 6,600 tons of local cobblestones utilized in its construction required the hauling of some 3,300 wagon loads from nearby Clear Creek. Large two story building is raised basement is approximately 123 feet long by 52 feet wide. The turret top tower reaches 65 feet in height and gives the building a castle like appearance. That's located uh, in the town. There is an air museum that surprisingly I have never been to. I need to I need to rectify that at some point. Forgive me if I'm kind of all over the place uh, as I'm switching between the aircraft and trying to pull up some uh, some sites here. I can turn this over to Steve to see if he'll the land for us today. You got it, Steve. Good. Biggest air and space, uh, Southern Colorado. Where are you going? Uh oh. Steve did this last week, where where he aborts the 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 landing. 
I'll give him a minute and see what he's gonna do. But last week he He would come in for a landing and then turn away, kind of like he's doing now. He might be resetting and starting the landing pattern again, but keep an eye on him. Conveniently located at Pueblo Memorial Airport, where we're at, Pueblo Weiss Broad Aircraft Museum is a must-see attraction. Visit one of Colorado's largest collections of military, space, and civilian aircraft uh, vehicles and artifacts spanning over 100 years of history. Our two hangars and outdoor exhibits compromise, uh, compromise, comprise over 85,000 square feet. Exhibits include both civilian and military aircraft, ground vehicles, missiles, and the Southern Colorado Space Museum. Take some time. You're going to need it. Do, 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 do. 10 bucks admission. Children are under seven may enter for free only when accompanied by a parent. Imagine a seven-year-old just showing up. I mean, I, I can't see it, but when accompanied by a parent, how many seven-year-olds just show up there? Well, uh, you're free, but if you're here at seven years old by yourself, we got to charge you 10 bucks. Active duty military, get in for free. Retired military, eight bucks. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Because if you're active, you're still making some money. If you're retired, hey, you need every bit of cash. I would do it the other way around. Active duty military, eight bucks. Retired, yeah, you're free. The showcase of heroes was founded in 1972 with the acquisition of an A-26 bomber. More aircraft soon followed and were parked in the yard adjacent, adjacent to Pueblo Memorial Airport. Fred Weisbrod, who was Pueblo City Manager at the time, started this operation, and it is a labor of love to this day. The inventory of aircraft. See what he's doing here. All right. He's going in. Inventory aircraft continue to grow, but because of weather, vandals, and scavengers, I can't imagine people. Again, elements of society, vandals and scavengers. Ugh. It was necessary to build a hangar to properly show our aircraft and artifacts. Through the efforts of then President uh, Mr. Rudy Escra. Hangar 1 was built in 2001. This hangar houses aircraft equipment, artifacts from World War 1, 2, and Korea, and includes Kichi, our prize B-29 bomber. Our inventory continued to grow in 2010. Hangar 2 was built housing aircraft and memorabilia from Vietnam, the Iraqi wars, as well as a large NASA display. Our museum is run entirely by volunteer men and women, most of whom are former military and have varied backgrounds and experiences. Our creator, docents, restoration crew, and gift shop personnel, some of which are World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq war vets, are passionate, eager to share their knowledge and show off our many exhibits. I almost feel like that's where I should be today. How you doing, Steve? Got us all ready to come in at, at runway eight here. Doing all right, man. I wonder which of these facilities. I wonder if some of these are them. These are they. It says it's right next door. I mean, it's in. There's a whole lot of other things out here that are next door other than that. This stuff. Steve, where are you going, man? Are you going to get us on the runway? You're a little right, Steve. I 
He had a tough time taking off like last week. He was always off the runway. What are you doing, bro? And we've got this sensitive stuff on board, Steve. Oh, wow. Wow, Steve. Like, who's Steve? Steve is the uh, AI, and that's what I call him. Wow. That was embarrassing, Steve. On Memorial Day, too, man. All right, you're, we're gonna, you sit down. I mean, just, if you're already off the road, just stay off the road, man. Just, let's just keep going. I hope you didn't damage the, uh, the goods. They don't have any working options. Transport from dispatch. Someone is coming to take the cargo. I'll call you when it's done. Mission is completed. Start your engine. Still didn't break two hundred thousand one hundred ninety eight seven twenty one. Okay. I'm almost tempted to attempt to take that. That's not far away, but I don't know about the terrain out there and uh, the last time we tried to do a search and rescue it just did not work we ended up circling and circling and circling and it just wouldn't toggle or three or eight that's a landing zone emergency one again That one, no way. Up in the mountains, not a chance. So, port three it is, and we're heading back to the butts. And then from there, let's just try to find one over at the uh, Air Force Academy. I haven't seen any of the uh, missions take us out to Aircrew, Peterson Air Force Base Today's or fragile cargo is being manually handled onto the aircraft at the customer's request.
Okay, I'm awake now, Steve. You want to wake up? I'm gonna see if see how well he's doing uh, on the taxi out. Them hauling butt. What do you think? You're me? He's like, no, what turn? He's going to crash us. Holy moly. He, uh, he crashed us in Colorado Springs. I had to, uh, that reminds me. That reminds me to remind you that if you're going to do this, back up your progress frequently. Because like then, right then and there, he could have crashed us. And if the, the only thing you can do, unless you're gonna try to pay the fees, which is ridiculous, that's your whole week's worth of pay or more. Will to, to repair the aircraft. And then you're gonna pay like, twice as much as what the aircraft is worth. That's really, it's really brutal and unforgiving. Wow. So I'm not so sure what's going on with him today. And what I said is, what do you think you're me? Uh, yeah, I don't, I tend to taxi a little bit faster than I should. But in the real world, you usually, you know, so, or so it seems when I watch professionals or, you know, just people that are real pilots, uh, and co-pilots they have a lot to talk about and to do and go over flight planning da, da 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 security you know security and safety first so you know not only is taxing slow um for safety purposes but gives them plenty of time to talk about what they're going to do if you are an impatient person <laughs> <laughs> you will probably hate taxing. You, they're pretty good about not dinging you for your speed. I know that uh, the, it's not even avail available anymore. Microsoft was funding Dovetail games to create the simulator first. And Dovetail Games created Flight uh, School and Flight Sim World. And and they would definitely ding you. I don't recall if FSX was that way as well. If you're speeding, they just totally chew your, chew your rear end.
Ah, I did not adjust our payload for bonus. All right. Let's see if I still can. Got it. Now, in your first plane that they give you, or whichever you choose, chances are you're not going to have an autopilot. But if your Steve is working right, you can at least try to turn them on. To hold you on a course heading. Uh, like he did there, he has a tendency to throw the flaps up a little bit. Did, did he pull them up or down? Okay, so my bad. Must have been down a little bit. Oh, for landing still. From landing. Um, good. All right, well, at least he's doing this part right. So if you just want to have him maintain a, a course heading, that's really the best you can do. I just saw an ad for a surfing pool. Surfing pools. Oh, I thought these were for like your home. I'm like, imagine having enough money that you could build a surfing pool. But I guess these are commercial. Commercial sized.
we should probably adjust course a little bit here and then switching back on mm. yeah uh, nope I'm gonna just a little bit. Simons in the field. Have Steve hold that heading here. Russia has issued an arrest warrant for Lindsey Graham over his comments. I, uh, I know that in the past we have always, you know, the Germans and the Russians, they've, you know, in our movies and stuff, in our, in our movies mostly, they're the bad guys, you know. But we're not at war with them. You know the cold war and i'm sure a lot of crappy things still go on you know spies and you know what things that we don't know but unless we're at war and even then you know it's it's you don't when you're at war it's one thing when you're not at war to say that the things that he said when you look at our civilization and our society and you look at their civilization and their society and you compare us to other civilizations and societies across the planet I mean we're the same And so on a people to people level, we seem to have much more in common with them than a lot of other people who really do want to hurt us and would like to see us all, uh, you know, done away with. And so, uh, I don't know where he's coming from. You know, what does he know that we don't know that would make him say such horrible things? A horrible thing. And it's really sad that I think in general, I don't know how you feel. I'm not military. So if you have any comments or you'd like to come in and uh, share them with me, that'd be great. But. 
I don't know why he would say such horrible things. And, you know, do people in our military feel that way too? Barack Obama is also forbidden from ever entering Russia. I, uh, again, I think our country's in a, in a really strange place. Historically speaking, the historians and educators when I was growing up always were comparing us to other empires that existed in the past. And they always pointed out that each great empire after the ancient ones always declined in a shorter and shorter and shorter amount of time. And that they only gave us like 250 to 300 years before they predicted we would fall like Rome. And here we are. And I totally thought with our growing up, this is me as a kid, when I'm learning all this stuff, I'm thinking to myself, well, with our amazing education system and our amazing sense of uh, nationalism, you know, we'll be the first. We will be the first to defy history. And, um, and we will not fall. Uh, external forces or internal forces it you know what are the causes that keep history repeating itself I have a couple of thoughts and theories but I don't know that I want to share them you know on on a live stream But I really didn't think, I really didn't think Americans, you know, coming out of the uh, the world wars and everything and going into the 80s and 90s where we were at, we would, that, that that could happen. And when you look at what's going on with our country today and the things our so-called leaders are allowing to happen, or welcoming to happen, Shouldn't have probably turned off, Steve. I was, we were probably on a better course to begin with. So it was my mistake. I think it's, we're, we're not really getting anywhere. Uh, I should have just stuck to following the highway back. I think I've doubled our time. Look at our, our, our great cities. Look what's happening to our greatest cities.
Frank Rosetta, no longer with us, but his art and family continue to post his art and his, you know, their thoughts. Today, we honor the brave souls who gave everything for our freedom. Their sacrifice will uh, forever be etched in our hearts and serve as a reminder of the true cost of liberty. On this Memorial Day, we express our deepest gratitude and solemnly vow to never forget their valor, valor and selfishness, selfish, selflessness. Yes, I are able to read. Blazing Combat, a War Comics magazine, was published by Warren Publishing from October 1965 to 19, uh, July 1966. Not a long run at all. The magazine, written and edited by Archie Goodwin, presented war stories set in both contemporary and historical periods. Unlike traditional men's adventure themes, Blazing Combat focused on humanistic perspective, emphasizing the personal toll of war. Despite its short run, of only four issues, each one featured artwork by Frazetta. He's talking about this particular piece titled Combat, served as the cover issue for uh, issue number one in 1965. Comment from Henry Driftwood, Frazetta, the best portrayal of pain and passion. Mike Ray, one of my favorite pieces. Jack, the lucky old pirate, freedom is not free. You know, and here it is, you know, blaming Russia. So here's a headline that's that's blaming Russia for a lot of our problems, okay? Russia has been at this for, this is with some dude named Michael McFowl. And I, you know, he's got a blue check. So right off the bat, I, I don't, I'm not inclined to believe blue checks, you know? But he's retweeting somebody named Catherine Belton. German spy chief says Russia using far left and far right to sow division. Naturally, there are attempts to get close to certain politicians on the right or the left fringes, less so to support those political pol uh, parties than to use their role to split society. You know, Russia, considering what goes on in Congress and what members of Congress and what people in political parties in each state are doing, are we going to say they're Russians? Maybe. The people in our own country are doing way more of that than Russia could ever do. So to blame Russia for, you know, supporting division in our country, I could see that. I mean, who doesn't? And it's, you know, Cold War kind of stuff. But we're currently our own worst enemies. I mean, we are uh, at war with each other, ideologically, politically. The things that people, once they get into power in certain states, the, 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 the rules that they've been making, especially regarding children lately, um, they've, they've created the problem. What in the world did I drift so far out? Where where are where are we? It's like where where am I? We were only seventeen minutes away, and now it's like what where? And we're moving at a good speed, but how in the world did we get into this time dilation between here and there, where it's just taking for forever to get down? 
downfield. I don't even know why I opened this map. This map is horrible. The in-game VFR map is just complete garbage now, and it's declined. It doesn't even respond properly. It's a, it's a real disappointment. Yeah, it's like we haven't moved. Here's like here's Pueblo. We're almost in a straight line from Pueblo. We were flying this way. We we're flying this way. I turned us this way to the east. I'm like, let's let me cut it off. Let me head east a little bit. So somewhere or another, I flew forward this way, and now I've turned us back this way. Yeah. So when we came down, we just came straight down and made a cut over to here. Anyway, I. sorry about that but we you know even again going this this fast it feels like the sim is in slow you know speaking of the sim being in slow you do need to get someplace in a hurry it's not always advised because it can throw off your uh job it seems but i've got some keys toggled to speed up the sim or slow it down so i'm going to attempt to it won't let me with the uh with Steve in charge. Okay. Good day. One two four decimal zero for Kineas two one. Colorado Springs approach Kineas two one eight thousand four hundred feet. Kineas two one Colorado Springs approach altimeter three zero decimal zero four. Continue as planned. Okay. Normally they, I thought they'd take it, do a straight end this time. Normally they bring us in on the opposite end. And normally it's a right entry. So today they're doing left entries. I can't remember the last time they, I can't remember any times actually being, uh, told to do a left entry and being told to land at that end of the runway. Today is just loaded with surprises. So yeah, I, you know, I don't want to be going back to what I was talking about. I don't want to be pointing or trying to blame other people for our problems when our problems are to say that our problems are not caused by our own people at the moment and being self induced. Uh, 
That's crazy. It, uh, it, we're to blame. Oh, I, if, if they want to go as far as saying that, well, then all these people in government, they're Russian assets, then, you know, say it. What you think? But I wouldn't blame. <laughs> Russia's not causing our problems. That's, that's just me. That's my two cents. And you might be in the military. You might have a different perspective on, on things. But I think, you know, the majority of our huge problems in the United States aren't being caused by them. They're being caused by our own people. And I think a lot of it has to do, in my opinion, is lack of history. That's, for me, I, I've always loved history. I did at one point thought it'll teach us nothing. What is the importance of learning any of this? It's the past. And now I'm just realize how a silly, lazy thing to say. Nice landing, pilot. Thank you. So I don't think we need to blame anybody else but ourselves for our current situation and our own, you know, blaming our own government, going back to economically, economically, we're in a bad, bad spot, you know, and if you believe in like, you know, Milton Friedman, believe the words of somebody like Milton Friedman, who says only, only to keep our mind on that one word only only government creates inflation and one of the popular pictures going around social media is McDonald's menu from the late 70s late 70s early 80s where you could get uh man pretty much dinner for your whole family like five bucks a whole meal for yourself for buck fifty two bucks a good one I mean if you're gonna pig out let's say you really wanted to pig out five bucks eat yourself into a coma if you wanted to eat yourself into a coma ten bucks you will spend ten bucks on nothing today you know and that's a good example of what I'm talking about is our own country our own we've 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 done ourselves in we've allowed people in our government to do this to us transport from dispatch someone is coming to take the cargo I'll call you when it's done so are we are we to blame Russia for that are we supposed to blame Russia that now a Big Mac is almost five dollars when it used to be 60 cents But hamburgers used to be twenty cents. Transporter, another cargo mission completed. Thanks, and see you soon. Yeah, a basic, basic, basic hamburger. Now what? Two bucks. Let's go. <clears throat> yeah, but the Big Mac, five bucks. Talk about <clears throat> my goodness. <clears throat> Don't even get me started on 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 their prices these days for what you get. When you have a huge tortilla and you can hold it four or five times on itself, like a pencil thin bit of filling, Everything is so stupid right now. Everything is so stupid. So again, I think back to other nations when they were falling apart and experiencing the same things we're going through right now. Just the frustration, the frustration of people with a perspective of history and 
thinking why 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 are we allowing this to happen again and let these people why are we allowing people to do it to us again and again and again it's so painful okay i wanted to go to the air academy so we'll take this job pilot this is dispatch the mail that is being loaded up is time sensitive no delays please roger that Dispatch. Captain, we have some crates marked as urgent. We'll load them now. Let's hope those crates contain letters and messages telling our armed forces we've got to get things under control. We've, uh, all, all these people in, in government that always they... Get us to the think they're working for us, and they're the just not. You should just make it on time. And every time they get in there, telling us they're going to do exactly what we want, they never, they just always seem to betray us. Everything looks different where I'm sitting. Except you know, and then you feel it's totally helpless, completely helpless how you know you want things to to turn around we want to be able to fix this and we can't even our own people and our own leaders are seem completely oblivious to history you know we've got all these people in government who 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 don't seem academic in any way like they have any understanding uh, you know and that sh should almost be a requirement I mean, we have to get licenses to drive and we've got to get certifications to do this and certifications to do that. And yet all you need is uh, some money to spread, or sp spread around and people to schmooze and you can get yourself into government and work your way up into government. And, you know, there's no qualifications. It's like, can you, uh, before you get in, give us your best essay on, on world history. Uh, give us, you know, the reasons, give us the top 10 reasons you think the last three great empires collapsed and what you would do different, you know, um, if you're entering government, you know, with those questions in mind, what would you do differently? How would you safeguard the United States from collapse as, uh, so many of so many others have done? And then when you hear the people in Congress speak, and it's like, you're, or, or what they're doing, and it's like, look, you're saying the same things that these people back in ancient Rome said, or ancient Greece said, and you don't realize that you're the problem. You're doing the exact same thing at the exact same time, the things that they faced. Transporter, have a nice flight. Whoa. The simulator seems still sped up. So now maybe that's karma for me talking crap. I don't know. So unfortunately, um, that was unexpected. Well, good thing we saved. Oh, what? and I didn't save right after that. I'm over here talking too much and not thinking and and put myself in a bad position. Um, but it seemed like the simulator was still sped up. Uh, I was moving way too fast right there. But I swore I had put us back down into normal mode. I landed. And everything was slow. Where are we back at? Are we back at, at we're back at Colorado Springs? Let's see what it, yeah. So now it's gonna cost us all the money that we've earned all week if I want to, to try to fix this plane. So you can't, you have to restore your progress. So that'll put us back to Pueblo. Definitely.
Let me see if this thing will start up on its own again. How embarrassing, how horrible. Well, again, we still, we didn't lose our, we lost our money there. We didn't lose our money from Pueblo. So where does it want us to be now? Are we still back at Pueblo? I would assume so. Yeah. All right, well, I will bite the bullet at least and move us back to KCFS and we'll try that again I'll eat the money on that so I'm down here station what oh I'm, that's definitely the wrong place That's more like it. Okay, so that should put both myself in my plane. Back to Yes, yes. I wonder if we will be able to sell the cargo. That'd be nice. I don't want to just ditch it. We're not medicine. Can we sell this now? It's saying it is locked.
Yeah, well, I guess we have to just ditch, ditch the job. Now what's going on? Now it's saying we don't have enough. Hmm, Bubba. Now it doesn't see that we have the cargo space. Now it's saying we don't. We have no payload. But for whatever reason, it still thinks that we do. Oh, this, this, uh, Title is definitely still does have a lot of little bugs like that, sinking bugs. I'm gonna go ahead and try to close Neil Fly again, and I want to have to start the uh, simulator again, but we might have to. Let's start one thing and restart one thing at a time. Anyway, to to sum it up, yeah, I, I think that. When I listen to a lot of people in government who I, I, I don't agree with. All I can see and hear is the same things that caused the downfall of other empires. And uh, I just don't understand. You know? That's when you say, well, don't, don't, didn't you take history? How did you manage to get into Congress and you don't know this? And how, how could you be doing these things when you know that that's where we're at and this is the same kind of thing and you're causing, you're causing it to happen. You're doing exactly what the historian said you were going to do. I'm going to have to try to restart the simulator now because I'm not getting a sink. I'm still saying I can't take these jobs. Unless this job didn't, no, it canceled. Unfortunate. So yeah, one little mistake like that will ruin your day. Just ruin your day. Because now look where we're at. Not only had to restart things, things are out of sync. I can't get any jobs at the moment. It doesn't see that I have no... It doesn't recognize now that I don't have a... Uh, that I have all the cargo space required for these jobs. So that's what I wonder about people today as we're talking about Memorial Day that, you know, how would they feel about our country right now? You know, what are we supposed to do? That's for certain. Oh, you can't see Twitter. So she shows a picture of barbed wire that says cutting skin and ripping jeans since 
So hopefully we can get this all back on track. These are the, definitely the things that have caused me to just want to give up on this career mode. I mean, it, uh, I, it's neat. I'm glad they finally have a career mode, but maybe there should be a couple of different types of settings, like, you know, maybe an easy setting because you are literally going to have to put in, uh, it seems at the moment, a career's worth of time. We've been at this for what, 12 episodes now. And on some days, like earlier in the week, I had a whole day. I, I put in a seven hour day. And we really got nowhere. And so 12 episodes and we're nowhere. We're nowhere. We're in the chump change mode of the. Uh, of the career mode. I'm trying to spawn us in here. If it doesn't turn green, you're going to spawn in the air. So always double check that when you select a departure area, the little dot where you want on the ground is, uh, is green. Okay. Let's put in a little bit of weight here under this thing. We don't really need any. And now let's see if we now it says we still can't we still can't pick any of these jobs. Uh <laughs> Maybe I need to have the Neopad on. I don't know. Let's see. That server restarted. And I can't select any of these. There's one, but that's an advertising one. We don't have a fire plane. Check our weight here again. The balances. Okay, it's least the payload. Put the payload back in. Ugh. So the sink is out of sync. I'm afraid to hit backup progression now. Aircraft is there already. Okay, let me try one more time. Turn this off, turn this back on. Maybe the only thing I could do then is restart us back at Pueblo. All right, come on. Come on, you. Mm. 
No, it still doesn't see. These jobs don't recognize. Jobs don't recognize us. All right, let's back it up. Uh, back it up again. And oh no 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 no. Oh no. I just hit the wrong thing. Uh, that won't matter. I think I just bunged us. What? Now, again, I'm about other people's stupidity, and today I'm just making the biggest mistakes. Uh, uh, inexcusable. Even when I drop the fuel that way, let's sink it. You need to set your flight. Changing the fuel sink setting will need to reset your flight. Yes, try it. It needs to also sync the weights and balances better. No, still can't get any. You know, I suppose we could try to take one of these jobs and... And then see if it'll continue from there. It says we can do these. But now Elena isn't talking. All right, let's try to cancel the job. That fixed it. Ready for engine start. <laughs> so what we were trying to do, we were trying to go to the Air Force Academy. Transporter, you must deliver this package before the deadline. The earlier, the better. Transporter from dispatch, loading express packages. Please stand by. Well, that's what you need to do is pick a job and then cancel it and it moved on. Uh, I don't think the live weather is on now that I'm looking outside. It went overcast. Transporter from dispatch. The cargo is on board. You are clear to taxi to the runway and take off. We definitely had blue skies earlier, but now that I'm looking outside, now we are on live weather. Okay. Well, either it hasn't caught up or I'm just under a particular cloud. That's supposed to auto connect.
Okay. We don't normally take off from the end of the runway either. See if Steve will try to kill us after that reboot. Better leave this open in case we have to disengage him. Oh. I am going to back us up now. We're in a spot where we're doing all right. Back us up right here. He sees a chowder head, yeah. And kills us on our way out to the runway. It does look like the clouds are coming in. Yeah, it's just that's what I'm under then. I'm under that right there. Just makes it look like it's a uh... well, it's just the way the lights coming in. It's making the area of town that I'm under under all this seem dark. Not that we probably won't get some scattered uh rain today that that would be wonderful we need it keep it coming he's taxing at proper speed just about anyway Easy, Steve. Easy. Zero zero three cleared for takeoff runway one three Kineas two one. Okay. I'm gonna have to watch the playback on that crash. That was strange. So I think it was still uh Transporter. Good flight. In a high speed mode. I I was messing with the sim speed. Right. 
before we landed, it seemed they had brought it everything back to the proper speed for landing. I guess not. Uh, I'm angling us towards the mountain so I can I think get you a shot of NORAD. Now, I think that's an auxiliary auxiliary parking lot there and then the gates and how you get into the facility and into the mountain are in the upper parking lot and if you've uh, seen shows like Stargate then you're familiar with the shot of the uh, the tunnel going into the mountain now it's not really very realized that well in the simulator. I think you can make out the tunnel somewhat.
but you know, the gates of NORAD. So the North American Aerospace Defense Command is a binational United States and Canadian organization charged with the missions of aerospace warning and aerospace control for North America. Aerospace warnings include the monitoring of man-made objects in space and the detection, validation, and warning of attack against North America, whether by aircraft, missile, or space vehicle. Through mutual support arrangement with other commands, aerospace control includes ensuring air sovereignty and air defense of the airspace of Canada and the United States. The May 2006 NORAD agreement renewed, added a maritime warning mission, details of shared awareness and understanding of the activities conducted in U.S. Canadian maritime approaches, maritime air uh, areas, and inland waterways. To accomplish these critically important missions, NORAD continually adjusts its structure to meet the demands of a changing world. The commander is appointed by and is responsible to both the U.S. President and the Canadian Prime Minister. The commander maintains his headquarters at Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado. The NORAD U.S. Northern Command, uh, use, Nor um, use NORTHCOM, Command Center serves a central collection and coordinating facility for a world worldwide system of sensors designed to provide the commander and leadership of Canada and the United States with an accurate picture of an, any aerospace threat. Three subordinate regional headquarters located at Elmendorf, Elmendorf Air Force Base, Alaska, Canadian Force Bases, uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, and Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida received direction from the commander and control air operations within their respective area of responsibility. So, yeah, NORAD. Roger, Kinias, two, one. Peterson Air Force Base is out that way. We're headed to the Air Force Academy. It's not that far. Kind of point us better that way. And turn Steve on to hold this heading. We're definitely going to need to refuel there. Should have put a little bit more in. Off our port wing, Broadmoor. Off our port wing used to be the old Mon uh, Sears, old Sears complex. And it's a lot of different things now. have that right no I probably don't it's probably still up ahead uh, let's see I think that is right let me get my my road straight all of that I think I had the my position wrong area that's like behind our tail now oh well on our starboard wing the our power plant which I guess they're dismantling 
that's been there in operation since the days of Nikola Tesla and produces steam and another decision I don't understand. Unless they're going to, you know, build another one, but I haven't heard anything. I love it just a different perspective when you're down on the ground and you look towards the mountains it all kind of flattens out in 2d it's one of the beautiful things about flying in the simulator and you know being able to see things from a different perspective and you understand then how people of the old days when they first approached this zebulon pike and earlier expeditions or whatever when whenever they they came from the east and started approaching all this and how it seems 2D and like, oh, I, we could get over this in a day or two. And then you really start seeing it. And no. Everything pretty much became hell for anybody traveling west at this point coming this way. Because, you know, going out east, everything pretty much is flat from here all the way to the coast thousands of miles then they traveled all that way thinking wow if, if the rest of America is like this we got it made and then they get here and they're like oh no uh oh life just became hell and pretty much from here on out California is just rough There's the um, the um, airstrip, one of the airstrips for the Air Force Academy over here. The Air Force Academy and its facilities are a little bit further down, down range, and we'll go over there. Let's do our landing. In 1954, the idea for the United States Air Force Academy was approved seven years after the Air Force was officially established. After 21,000 miles of traveling to potential sites, an appointed commission recommended Colorado Springs as its first choice, which is where the Academy resides today. Do, 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 do. I was hoping to get a little bit more, but we're going to have to try a different site, like a wiki or something. On July 11th, 1955, the same year construction on the academy began in Colorado Springs, the first class of 306 men was sworn in at a temporary site, Lowry, 
Air Force Base in Denver, Lieutenant General Hubert R. Harmon, key figure in the development of early plans for an academy, was recalled from retirement by President Dwight D. Eisenhower to, to become the first academy superintendent. Two years later, Major General James Briggs took over as the academy's second superintendent. On August 29, 1958, 1,145 cadets moved to the academy's permanent site from Denver. Less than a year later, the academy received academic accreditation and graduated its first class of 207, June 3, 1959. In 1964, the authorized strength of the cadet wing increased to 4,417. The present authorized strength is approximately 4,000. Perhaps the most controversial element uh, event in the academy history was the admission of women. President Gerald R. Ford signed legislation October 7, 1975, permitting women to enter the military academies. Women first entered the Air Force Academy June 28, 1976. The first class, including women, graduated in 1980. The academy celebrated the 50th anniversary of its inception in April 2014. Three noteworthy events occurred in connection with the celebration. A 37 cent commemorative stamp was issued honoring the Academy with the Cadet Chapel. Strikingly portrayed. The Cadet Chapel is what I used for my uh, cover artwork for today's episode. If you're wondering what that building was and you didn't know, that is the chapel. And I'll, we'll fly by that in a, in a bit here. The Academy was declared a National Historic Landmark with a plaque installed on the Honor Court to mark the occasion, and Harmon was officially named as the father of the Air Force Academy, honoring the pivotal role he played in its planning and establishment. Further anniversaries were marked during the next four years, culminating with the 50th anniversary of the first commence commencement at the Academy in 2009. The Academy heralded its 60th anniversary throughout 2014 with year-long events and special news features highlighting the advances. The institution is made for the Air Force, for cadets, and for the Department uh, of Defense. The Defense Departments. The Academy provided the Air Force with a Corps of Officers dedicated to upholding the high standards of the profession. The Air Force, in turn, provides a proving ground for these officers and sent back to its Academy dedicated staff members to educate and train future leaders. More than 60 years after the first class was admitted, the Academy has graduated more than, more than 50,000 officers. What are you doing, Steve? He's stalling. And he's just chewing up the fuel.
Oh my lord. Really? He he damaged the year. On, Steve, just a little bit more. If he listens to that, we're doomed. Taxiing to general aviation parking via yes, we just need to get onto the taxiway at this point. Yeah, they're going to have to make a big circle to just come over here. I'll go way over there where Transporter, cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Transporter from dispatch. Everything seems okay. No, the we've, customer looks happy. We've finally done done it. We've gone over two hundred thousand, two hundred and one, seven oh four. Let's go. This money is going right back to where we came from, back to the military base at the moment. Yep. That is our, our best. So let's do the, uh, let's do the, let me fly over the Air Force Academy proper. And then we'll head back over there and, how is it? Two.
Um. Transported from dispatch. It's a sensitive cargo mission today. When you check the payload in the flight plan, please release the parking brake to start. Transporter from dispatch. Loading sensitive cargo. Please stand by. Seven. Brown Kinias 2-1 ready to taxi departure to the north of Quebec. Kinias 2-1 taxi to and hold short of runway 16 center via taxiway Charlie cross runway 8 Charlie Bravo. Contact tower on 124 decimal 15 when ready. You're good to go. Academy Brown Kinias 2-1 ready to taxi straight out departure to Quebec. You're good to go. Checking my mix here. Trying to get it set in the right spot. I think I just heard thunder. Our live weather might be a little bit off as well. Is down south where we're going to be headed here uh, shortly. Yeah.
transporter from dispatch. Fly safe and remember to watch your landing. So this is one of the airfields. There's another one to the east of us. And unless you know where to look, you don't really see it. And from the highway, when you're moving around the elevations the way it is, you just can't even see it. Never knew it was there for years and years and years. Just never knew. Didn't see it. And then these are the roads, the back roads. to the Air Force Academy. There's one major road that way, and then but the majority I think come in through this way or through from the highway out east a little bit, a couple miles. And then make their way in this in towards the, the facility. The uh the football field Coming up as well. Hard to believe it's still all these grass fields for parking. I remember being a young guy and doing caddying with uh, Air Force friends of the family. Wow, our drone is way off. Looks like they always looks like they got a tiny little airstrip right there. No, that's a parking lot. I'll be darned. So you used to be able to see it real good from the highway, then all these trees kind of came in and it was, can't really, really make it out so easy anymore. a lot of construction out over here from the highway coming in now so the update being we won't be able to see any of that but quite a lot of construction they filled up they're filling up this corridor to Denver on I-25 can't say I appreciate it but progress So it's interesting. I wonder what it was. I mean, they said after 21 
thousand miles of studying different places to put the Air Force Academy. You know, I wonder what, you know, what was it? Something to do with, I mean, what were the, the conditions that like, this is the spot. So what made, I wonder what made this area, the area. So all those down there to the right, those are all like tennis, tennis courts and playing fields. There's the uh, chapel right underneath us. Good place to park your, your jet, right? Like they were taking out a building or putting in a new building there. Yeah. They must love their tennis. I mean, a lot. You know, one just amazingly unique looking building and all the rest are just, and then they, they're building another one right behind it or it's just giant white cube. Come on. It's such, when you just do these giant white cubes that they're just such eyesores, uh, against such a beautiful backdrop. It's like this building here that's in the back. Either they're building a new one over this whole thing, but it's humongous, like an Amazon facility. It's this giant white structure back here now. Okay. Ain't pretty at all. I don't know what these facilities are on, you know, over in this, this area. It's all part of it. I think there's a planetarium over here somewhere. I don't know if that's the high school, maybe. Very pretty back here. How oh, lovely. I wish most of the terrain out here in Colorado were more like this. Sometimes in the middle of spring and summer, every you know, you can get a lot of the terrain turning green and it looks nice, but I wish there was more absolutely 
green in the landscape. Everything's so bleak as you head out east. Uh, I know that uh I, with the latest updates, I've acquired more planes and uh, some helicopters that I've never used. Really interested in trying those. Garden of the Gods area. I always talk about that when we fly over. That's it right there. Just a really unique rock formation. You don't really find anything else like it until like Sedona, Arizona. So it's, you know, compared with everything around it for a hundred miles or more, there's, it's totally unique. There really is. There really are a few things that look quite like it. This is an area that's been attracting more and more of my attention just for the terrain just what interesting terrain in here and people haven't filled it all in and started moving up in here but see they've created little roads throughout here there's some unique geology going on under all of this. In some ways, I always think of ancient aliens and like Machu Picchu. And I wonder, I mean, since, you know, we have, we really don't have ancient ruins in the United States, but there were supposedly 
all over the place you know and so when i see things like this and i know that there were cliff, cliff dwellings and other things going on in the area it makes me wonder they're uh You know, where are, where are our pyramids? We're starting to get uh, in the simulator. I'm hearing the, the thunder. I think I just saw some lightning up ahead, up above us. So thank goodness we're getting some rain today. Thank you. Thank you, creator. We need it. Like I'm getting ready to enter a rain, a rainy area here on my, t my, more, my side of town. Make it green creator, green it up. This is a pretty drive when you take these, when you go behind Cheyenne Mountain and you take this road out to Pueblo or Canyon City, wherever you're going from here. By the way, it's pretty right. Nice drive. One of those things too, when I first started flying, again, everything's things, everything seems 2D when you're looking at it from out here. And when you finally get up here and you're like, oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. And I knew it was there, but you just... Flying just gives you such a, a different perspective on anything, on everything. to think here I live let's see I live approximately uh, I want to say I live in here and I think that is the road comes over here come down here Yeah, all of this in here Clear to land runway one tree. Kitty is where I live.
Ah, uh, there was some lightning. Keep coming south, rain. Go to my house, please. Come on, Steve, don't kill us. My lord. What is he doing? Please proceed to part one pallet. I hope the cargo survived that. Unbelievable. Transported for the runway and taxi to part. I thought he had it. He was doing it all coming in all perfect, and I thought he was gonna redeem himself. No, no, he didn't. Well, another bug report put into Microsoft. Ask him what's going on with the AI. Is it the chatbot AI now controlling things and it's got an attitude? Is it too liberal and doesn't like me talking about military things and and now it's it's decided it's going to uh, have an attitude. That's just nuts.
I've never seen it. I've never seen it do it, that kind of thing before. Ready? Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Okay. Ah, uh, we are over. We, we did over 200,000. So I'll be happy with that. We didn't get very far because of our uh, little setback today. But we finally, uh, transporter, another cargo mission completed. Thanks. I'm afraid if I repair our plane now, we're going to be back right back to where we were. Ready for engine start. So how much will this cost us? Look at that. It costs almost as much as the plane and we're it's not very badly damaged. But 20,000 to repair your plane with 79% and 95.8% how much will this cost for a tune up? Tune up. Well, that's fine. 100 bucks. That's more reasonable. That's ridiculous. This is probably caused by Steve, the damage. All right. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I mean, I really want to keep going with this career mode, but I'm just really now starting to get unhappy with this uh, program. Uh, one, just, I guess, how long it's taking. And then the cost of everything. And then the cost of all the planes and the cost of the certification. And they're like, well, you wanted a career, didn't you? Yeah, but maybe something a little bit more fun. I don't know. I don't know. A couple of ways to play it, maybe. You know, hardcore and maybe a much more casual way. But I'm kind of not, I'm, I'm really starting to not dig it. And I'm spending a lot of time doing these menial jobs and not I mean normally I use flight simulator for practice you know I want to learn stuff and uh, just doing these I'm you know I'm just not I'm uh, I'm spending too much time away from learning other things and uh, spending time in different planes so I don't know I don't know if I I, I just don't know I'll keep at it for a while and uh, hope I can find some joy in it. But when I turn it on and get going, I just start yawning and uh, this is really boring and I'm not, I'm not digging it. So I don't know if I will make it to become Kinius Sky Dude. I really need to get into the Discord and, and talk to those folks about their product. Maybe we can, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. But we shall see. All right, folks. Well, uh, until tomorrow. And uh, I'm not sure what my schedule is for the morning yet. If not, I'll be back in the, the middle of the afternoon or late afternoon per usual. And we'll pick it up there. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great Memorial Day. And again, if you're uh, armed forces or were, thank you for your service. Have a good day. Good night.